What thing is it that can cry like a woman, laugh like a devil, and shines like witchfire as it glides through the trees? Gasped Balthus, mopping the sweat from his pale face. A swamp devil, responded Conan morosely. I am Thugra Kotan, who shall rule the world despite your paltry gods. The desert is filled with my people. The demons of the earth shall do my bidding. In the Conan universe, over 100 years of publication has given us a near-infinite number of examples of those great and evil creatures known as demons. Demons have bonded with and have been affected evolutionarily by the energies that reside in the various hell realms known collectively as only one facet of the dreaded Outer Dark. There are many theories on how to define these monsters. Today, we'll be presenting one possible classification system heavily compatible with the expanded universe. As always, our source list will be below for those who want to follow along as the video progresses. In this case especially, I claim no lore master status. Now, come with me to the bowels of hell as we begin. If you'd like to see future videos a week early, along with other unique content, go to the subscribe star link in the description box, select any tier to contribute, and sign up as a member of the Grimdark Army. My thanks to the current men and women in service, whose names are seen here. Grimdark. Half off! The first thing to go over before defining our system is understanding the catch-all terms that encompass hell entities, but are also used to refer to those creatures coming to us largely from the overlap with the Cthulhu mythos. Devils from the Outer Dark can be used to refer to anything that likely wants to kill humanity, for example. There's also a creature called a Devil from the Outer Dark, which actually fits into the classification of Devil, which we'll get to. But more specifically, it is often used to refer to mythos entities heavily associated with the Outer Gods. So you see, we already have three meanings for this one big catch-all term. These beings are things like Nair Lethotab, Shub Nigarath, and Yog sothoth as well as others in the infamous Court of Azathoth, which we will cover more when we get into our Dreamland series, and also when we do a video similar to this one, but for Mythos Entities. The next term is more of a title. Oftentimes, you will hear a race or entity be referred to as a being of Elder Knight, which most commonly simply means that they they were around before the initial banishing of demons to the various hell realms after the rise of the first men. This again can apply to a host of creatures, including demon gods, which we will be covering near the end of the video. This term actually gets even more murky. I'm actually approached by people often in the comments who don't really understand the Marvel additions to Conan lore from the 70s were actually very respectful. The entire department was given a big separation from the mainstream superhero stuff so they could show proper respect to Howard's work. If you wanted to fully discount the Marvel lore, then you can add a totally new, because if that's the case, then it's just a mystery. And if your tabletop wants to do that, you can literally just say, well, it was they were far more wicked or they were far more graceful. If you want to add in your own lore, it's very modular here. It's very modular. I, if that's really something you want to do personally, I like the idea of the first men rising, divine gods championing them, and then the gods themselves as Marvel added to it the demons themselves being angry at humanity, the source of that antagonism is from losing Earth, and Earth is the battleground. It explains a lot of their motivations, humanizes them. I love it, but of course, you can do your own thing. Now, the weakest and most inconsequential of demons in Conan are known as imps, and they occur through a process I have referred to on this channel as impification. Best visualized in the video game Conan Exiles, impification occurs when a starving person, ghoul, or plant, as we have seen so far, begins to starve near an area teeming with hellish power. Their bodies will try to make up for their lack of food and water with this demonic energy. The resulting transformation results in a body with asymmetrical features, three-fingered hands, three-toed feet, and significantly reduced intellect. These creatures are the closest thing to goblins in Conan lore. Demonologists are easily able to gain control over them, and in the game Age of Conan, high-level demonologists can summon a small army of them imbued with hellfire to do their bidding, which is really cool. You just get this little army of Quasimodos who are just burning everything down for you, and I just, I love them so much. 
Slightly above imps, we have the realm of succubus, incubus, and other lesser entities, which follow the lore laid out in the real-life book Demonology by King James, which warns of the summoning of demons and has its own classification system different to the one we're using here. Minor demons include anything that can be easily tamed or controlled by means of magic or training. They are often low in intellect and possess similar power to or just above an imp, which itself is about as strong and smart as a learning-impaired, deformed human, if not empowered by a talented demonologist or greater demon controlling them. Which is really cool, I think. It just briefly, the notes on the complexity of imps and how you could use them for whatever you want they remind me a lot of Nurglings from Warhammer 40k, in the sense that a Nurgling could be imbued with like a specific disease, and people really underutilize that. Imps could be imbued by a specific demigod, and I love the idea of like a little imp version of a Herald of Zotli running around, or a little imp, uh, if you want to get super creative with it and kind of rule bend, an imp vampire running around under Varney. That'd be very, very cool. Uh, they are also defined by their seemingly accidental animal pattern of behavior, which causes them to find themselves on Earth more frequently than their smarter, stronger cousins. So a great example of that would be bat demons who come to us from Nergal. Uh, bat demons frequently do end up migrating just instinctively towards the, uh, towards the various caves and land of Earth. And what will happen often is that they will either show up in a spectral form, in which case they did not migrate correctly or they migrated differently than those that show up in physical form. But if they show up in a spectral form, you'll often find that they are scared away by anyone of any kind of faith. So I suppose that is a weaker bat demon who will go back into the Hell Realm very quickly. And then they will come out as a full-fledged bat demon, which would be, of course, a minor demon beast. Uh, so bat demons, incubus, rock noses, which you will often see in Conan Exiles, and of course sand beasts, which you often saw again in Conan Exiles. On the far side of minor demons, I would put the king of them as the infamous Thog from the Conan story A Witch Shall Be Born. This tentacled monster, while venerated by its local humans, clearly had an animal intellect, which caused it to seek out victims even after it had been supposedly appeased through sacrifice, which is something a smarter demon wouldn't do if they were trying to maintain followers in a cult. In addition, going back to the video games and our own video on dragons and Conan, almost all of them except for the pure dinosaurs would qualify on the higher end of this category. So if you don't know, in that video I had five types of dragons, one of which was a pure demon and how it mated, and most people theorize in the Conan community and the fan community that it mated with a stegosaurus to create the various types of dragons as they would evolve and how their lineages would develop. Uh, while strong and very dangerous, they do not possess the power to be a truly civilization-ending threat. That is to say that while a large enough version might uh, qualify as a kaiju, for instance, there is the black dragon enemy that comes to us from Age of Conan in the 2008 game, but it, while it might be a kaiju-level threat, it might be this large Godzilla-like creature attacking your city, it is still a wild beast that can be taken down, broken down, beaten down, and destroyed. It is not capable of... It's not a sorcerer king from Dark Sun. It's not going to go rule over your city and empower people with magic in exchange for services towards it and continuing its rulership. Greater demons reside in their respective hell realms most dominantly, and it usually takes very special rituals to summon them forth, being even harder to control them. Being just as, if not more intelligent than a human, these creatures will often seek out a more powerful member of their own kind or higher entity to serve in return for power in the form of strength in numbers. Usually also some form of imbuement, and you can look at that, uh, look at that as kind of a chart of higher or greater demons empowering minor demons like imps, which of course we have no reason to assume that greater demons would not also be talented demonologists in many cases, along with, say, higher tier devils. 
Uh, great examples of these would include blood defilers who can be found in service to the Blood Moon Beast in the Isle of Sipta, and the shape-shifting hyena men who are the pure blood form of were hyenas, as well as the direct children of the demon god of fear, Jamanaka. Of course, another great example of this would be, depending on how you view Set, the Serpent Men of Earth, at least. At least the Serpent Men of Earth, uh, who would be the children of Sligath, uh, and Sligath himself would be a higher demon. The pure blood serpent men would definitely fall within that uh, general classification of higher demons. I just didn't want to use them as an example because I'm, I want to do a serpent man video and revisit the serpent men because the, my basic 12 minute video I don't feel does them justice. So serpent men and set revisited is still big on the list. They can be enlisted by master demonologists who are experts in their craft, as well as those willing to make deals with them in exchange for something they consider valuable. For the hyena men of Germanica, this is most often secrets or sexual acts, but for most it will usually be a blood sacrifice or other things which furthers the goal of their respective demon god or higher entity master. This usually involves some form of anti-human act due to most demon gods having their own diverse ways of seeking humanity's destruction for taking their rightful place on earth. And of course, a great example would be Durketto's view of, and this is an easy way, again, like I, I spoke before of the Marvels, what Marvel added in terms of the demon gods being at war with uh, the divine gods and humanity and them hating humanity because they view their homes as being taken by them, which actually fits really well with the cycle of civilization and history that we often find, as well as the cycle of civilization we see from the Flying Ape Men and Queen of the Black Coast. I feel like that works out quite well with the downfall of Hanuman, equaling also the slow downfall of ape men into being savage creatures or more savage creatures. I actually really, really enjoyed that concept the rightful place upon the earth. So a great example would be Durketto viewing the way this occurred, the trauma of being banished from earth as well. The problem was nobody was connected to each other, and what we really need to do is get rid of all this division. And how does Durketto do this? Well, Durketto is going to make a world where necromancy is common, so no one ever really dies in her view. And then in addition to that, everyone's too busy having an orgy to go to war with each other. So it's a never-ending, undead, necrophilic orgy. I, I hate Durketto so much but I can understand her, and that's why I hate her more. And that's what makes her a good god and a good character. If you'd like to have your own necrophilic orgy, you'll probably need today's sponsor, Ronin Craft. Ronin Craft is an independent 3D printing service that will get you miniatures which are amazing for sci-fi, fantasy, or weird fiction. The owner of the service recently got into contact with me about bringing my custom space marines to life, the Celestial Eagles. I really enjoy that concept. With Ronin Craft, you'll get quality that surpasses any master. Devils can be thought of as half biome, half demon, and many can be traced back to the demon god Jebel Sog. Jebel Sog is known as the father of werewolves, teacher of the primal language, and by siring many demon god children, he is also technically the grandfather of werehyenas, harpies, yetis, and minotaurs. The calling card of Jebel Sog is the teaching of the primal language, with some of his half-human children possessing no demonic power other than the simple ability to communicate with all animal life. The goal of the primal language is to unite all living beings in the same animal kingdom of savagery, theoretically being his way of liberating all beings from the terrible reign of mankind. In this case, a swamp devil in the Conan story Beyond the Black River openly names the demon god as his father. While many take the form of a giant humanoid to better wreak unsuspecting havoc on mankind as they are depicted in most Conan media, in the Dark Horse comics and Funcom games we were gifted with a very unique design that really brings home the raw savage side of these creatures, displaying them as giant demonic beasts made out of their respective biome. Regardless of interpretation, whether more human or more monstrous, gigantism does seem to be a shared trait. I repeat that they are half biome as they seem to be literally born from Jebel Sog cross-mating with the Earth itself. Examples include Swamp Devils mentioned previously, Forest Devils as mentioned in the Conan story The Black Colossus, and the devolved creature known as Rot Branch found in the Exiled Lands. 
The rotted hulk also seems to be a good indication of what occurs when a devil's biome dies, as I would posit that due to its savage behavior, Rot Branch was once a forest devil, now occupying an animal graveyard of dead trees, which is reflected in its current appearance. Devils are often conjured forth by demonologists as a conditional ally that is often easier to make deals with, as they are more interested in knowledge of sorcery, preserving their habitat, and a general desire to kill humans, which is what they are usually enlisted for anyway, making excellent, biome-specific assassins. Heralds are those creatures which can be classified as half-human, half-demon. This can be by birth, ritual, or curse. A birth example comes to us in the form of a demigod werewolf woman that Conan meets in the deserts of Turan. One of her parents made a deal with Jebel Sog, and in return, she was born a werewolf. Every night she would transform without warning, eventually causing the man who raised her to have to put her down. A ritual example comes to us in the infamous, of course, fire-breathing cultists known as the Heralds of Zotli, my personal favorite subsect of demonologists. Zotli is a demon god of destruction, and his followers undergo a special ritual in which half their soul is replaced with his power. This turns them into a half-demon and allows them to transform into a jade-skinned, tentacle-faced demon humanoid with the ability to breathe fire. This makes sense as Zotli takes the form of a brimstone fire squid and is known as the demon god of destruction. Finally, an example of a curse that would do this is the usual way one becomes a werewolf, which is through a bite causing full moon uncontrollable transformations to occur for the purpose of spreading Jebel Sog's primal language by spreading that same curse. Most fiends in Conan are best thought of as anti-imps. They are usually greater or minor demons that have spent so long on Earth they have begun developing normal evolutionary adaptations that we would see in animals or insects. In the case of their relation to already bestial minor demons, they can be seen as outlier leaders of their pack. This is true for the Fiend of Jill, which is a more bird-like harpy than its sister species, and a beacon of their evolutionary future should they stay on Earth. In the case of the Guardian Fiends, which are very closely related to fire demons, they have developed six spider-like eyes as well as bone growths for extra protection around vital areas. Bioluminescence has also been evolved to deal with the dark environment they currently reside in, making it easier to see. Our last example comes to us from the unique biome of the Isle of Sipta, where we can see Hercules' beetle-like horns and an exoskeleton being adapted to help fight the area's many predators. This evolution happened very quickly due to the Isle's deep connection to the reality-warping place known as the Dreamlands through its weather system. The time it should take for a demon to become a fiend, if we use the fall of Acheron 3,000 years before the birth of Conan as an example, as with Guardian fiends, seems to be anywhere between 1 to 3,000 years. This is also the same time it took for some Atlanteans to devolve into the unique three-eyed ape-men known as the Troglodytes after the Great Cataclysm. Most demon gods come from the time of Elder Night, and seemingly have their power and status within the Hell Realms of the Outer Dark, due to their presence on Earth before the rise of man. While some of these entities have heavy overlap with Mythos deities, even those deities in this context are being talked about as beings who existed on Earth before man and were, if only temporarily in some cases, banished to a hell of some sort. During their reign on Earth, many already presided over an entire race of their offspring, who changed along with them during their fall. Evidence found in the Winged Ape Man of the Black Coast, found in Queen of the Black Coast, would heavily suggest that the children of Hanuman were once angelic ape and yeti folk before descending to Earth, where their intellect also devolved into a state of pure savagery. Also relative to living beings, this happened likely, I want to say, within the one to three thousand year time frame, but we can never really be sure. This is because the winged ape folk clearly have a slow evolutionary change that occurred. Something in the water literally changed after the time of Elder Night, and that lines up suspiciously well with the idea of when demon gods were banished to hell realms. That seems very, very likely. 
We can think of the devolution of men into ape men as a curse from this demon god. Likewise, Set was said to hold the most direct hatred for mankind through his creation of various races of demonic entities, as well as later the Serpent Men, who would be featured very heavily across both Cull and Conan stories over the years. Due to cultural imprinting from ancient demonic empires like Acheron or the Tumbulku tribes, demon gods like Ajujo, who is thought to be the creator of the Black Ones, as well as the previous mentioned set have found their way into human cultures. Of course, these entities are very ancient and wise, being able to contact sorcerers practicing the dark arts to infiltrate a culture regardless. This occurred in Stygia, causing the revival of Set, as the once healer of Ibis, Thothamon, increasingly studied methods to gain power, leading to the worship of Set. Upon taking power as the high priest of Stygia, he would replace the divine god Ibis with Set. This combination of worshipping a giant snake while also being the religious authority of his homeland earned him the nickname Snake Pope on this channel. Finally, we have those people who will very likely become demons of some kind before or after their death, which are demonologists, who are so close to the various hell realms that the first thing they learn is how to command hellfire. After this, many command minor demons, such as a single imp, or more commonly a succubus or incubus, which is actually the same sex-changing demon both in King James's demonology from our real world and Conan lore. To gain more power, a demonologist may seek out heraldry of some kind as becoming a herald of a demon god, performing a personal dark ritual to become a psychic vampire known as a dark templar, or even seeking out necromantic companionship in those true bloodsuckers of the night. Weaker demonologists are likely to become imps upon death, and heraldic ones would likely reincarnate as greater demons after death, forever bound to serve their respective dark god. If neither of these things occurs, the demonologist will very likely simply burn in the fires of hell for all eternity. Or, you know, whatever passes for hell in the outer dark, which I'm sure is worse. In summary, here is a chart I created to further define my theory for your use and enjoyment. It's important to end this on a disclaimer, really the same disclaimer this should have started with if I haven't said it already. I can't state enough that this is a theory. There is no true classification of Conan demons other than what we can tell from the over 100 years of publication which I've expressed here. If you feel a better theory would fit, please comment below, share the video with your thoughts, and if you want your videos a week early, don't be afraid to donate on Subscribestar. I'm doing that to raise money in a way that doesn't cut off my normal subscribers in a pay gatey way, so you still get the content just a week later and you're like, oh, you know, I'm really excited for that content, I really want that content, so I'm going to pay the money. Thank you all for watching, and have a lovely day. Be sure to tune in next time when we will talk about the Black Ones, their demon god Ajujo, and their old civilization of the Tumbulku tribes that once populated the Black Kingdoms, acting as the southern neighbor to Acheron in its prime. I actually held a poll a while ago, a very long time ago now because of how long this video has been delayed in terms of its creation, asking you whether you wanted Black Ones or Frost Giants, because I had B-roll of both that I recorded literally now two years ago. So, yeah, no, Black Ones won that poll, and I'm very happy to, to do their culture. It should be actually a pretty quick video, because the Tumbalku tribes are pretty fun to theorize on, and after that, you know, the, the Black Ones, they just they want to put everybody in a little statue. They put you in a little statue, seal you away, and as they conquer the world, and they seal you away. That's what they do.